everybody. You guys excited? Ah, oh, so good. Happy Pentecost Sunday. Are you guys coming expectant for the Lord? Uh, he's already so present in the back. We were just all a mess, just pouring out our hearts before him. And I really felt like this morning and probably tonight too, I felt like the Lord is gonna give real praise for heaviness. So if you're heavy this morning, I want you to just lift your hands and I want us to take this in faith. When I was running this morning, the Lord said clear as day. He said, when I give praise for heaviness, it's still something they have to receive. There's a partnership. So we yield, Lord, we yield our bodies to you this morning. We want to give you some Something so costly, Lord. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to lead us into raw, authentic worship this morning. Let it be so real. Let it be from our hearts, Lord, not just from our lips. Come on, just give yourself over right now. Just surrender to him. Whatever you've come in here with, we put at his feet and we say, Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy to be gazed upon. We thank you for the privilege it is to know you, Jesus. We thank you for the privilege it is to be in your presence, Lord, that on this side of the cross, we get to live in your presence. That is amazing. Let us be like children this morning. That is amazing, Lord, that we get to be with the Holy of Holies, with the Holy One of Israel. We get to live with you. We get to dwell with you. What a privilege, Lord. What a privilege it is to have your Holy Spirit inside of us. Just thank Him, thank Him for that. Thank Him for His blood. Thank you that it's only by His blood that we get to enter in. This is amazing, this is really good news. Come on, let's just let thankfulness well up in our hearts just for a minute. Just thank Him for your story, thank Him for His mercy. He's been so kind. The way he's revealed himself to you, how he picked you up out of the pit and gave you real joy. Thank you, Jesus.
situation too. Come on, start lifting your voice. Lift your voice to Jesus this morning.
press into the Lord right now. Don't move past this moment. Don't wait for us to sing your song. You can lift your voice. You can start joining in with heaven.
make it your prayer. song this morning or I wonder if we're going to sing it there's something on it for us and as I was praying this morning reading the scriptures I began to make this song my prayer now I know the Holy Spirit has marked this song for the morning I want you right now just to lift your hands and audibly begin blessing the Lord in the spirit come on just begin blessing him However you want to bless him, bless him. Come and fill this room, Holy Spirit. Fill this room with your tangible, weighty presence. Blessing the Lord. Keep blessing the Lord. Come on, Sunday morning, break the rules. Break the rules. Come on. Just let go of everything that has a form of godliness but no power. Come on, get real with Jesus this morning. Get real with Jesus. is the Lamb. Holy, 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 holy.
church in one accord, make it our prayer. Lift your voice. and close your eyes and keep singing just lift your hands to heaven and offer your body and your life to Jesus this is when Jesus becomes real right here it's when he becomes real to us and this is where miracles happen this is where lives are changed Exalt the Lord. Keep playing behind me, guys. You see, when we exalt Jesus and ascribe Him the glory that's due, He begins to move. And we don't do it so that He moves, but that's just the way He is. And there's an old saying if my father in law used to tell us if you touch His heart, He'll move your, His hand. It's the great privilege, more than ministering to people, is to minister to the Lord. And you cannot have consistent manifest presence without consistent ministry unto the Lord. You know, when they built the temple, just keep your eyes closed and listen to me because the Holy Spirit's moving. Just, this is Pentecost Sunday, and he's more excited about it than we are. Oh, why don't you just lift your hands to heaven and say, Jesus. Baptize me afresh in the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah, just receive. Just receive. You see, the temple was constructed so beautifully. Everybody was so skilled. This is important. It's important. The choirs were arranged. Everything done according to wisdom. But the glory, the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit did not come until they started singing. Interesting, interesting. Maybe some of you came this morning wanting to hear a good teaching, and you will, in Jesus' name. <laughs> May the Lord help me. But never, ever, ever shortchange the meaning and the weight and importance of true worship. Worship will take you further than debate and effort. Worship will take you further than skill set. Worship will take you further than gifting. You 
It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Why don't you lift your hands and say, Holy Spirit, come on, in your own way, don't copy me, don't copy me. Just write, you've got to get guttural, you've got to get, you've got to get in there with Jesus. You've got to, he can't anoint your mask, you see, he can't do that. Just peel it back. Give him your heart, even if it's broken. Give him your heart this morning. And ask the Holy Spirit to teach you how to minister to Jesus. I'll tell you how you do it. Become a little kid. Become a little child this morning. Lose the repetition. Lose the form. Lose it all. Lose what you think church should be. How you think this morning should go. When you think we should leave. When you think God has had enough worship. Just lose it all this morning. Leave it all on the ground. Throw it down at His feet. Let the fire of the Spirit burn it up. And ask the Holy Spirit to make you like a little child. Who loves the presence of their Father. You are wonderful. Let your glory fill this place this morning. Let your glory fill this place this morning. Fill this place this morning. Never underestimate the power of adoring Jesus. If you're sick this morning, just give him your body. Offer it. It's this simple. Say, Jesus, here's my body. Heal me. That's all you got to do. to take about the next 30 seconds and just just love on the Lord come on come on love on him love on him love on him part of your being be walled off this morning let let the Lord in his loving hand reach as deep into you as he needs to go this is where broken hearts are healed you see you just got to get into his presence you just got to get in let's lift our hands let's worship a little more
song, just lift your hands in His presence. And right now, just right where you are, with your eyes closed, give Jesus your full attention. And as you do, you'll, become, you'll begin to sense the presence of the Lord. That is the Lord Himself. And so, Jesus, this morning we lift our hands in your presence. We lift our hands to you because you told us to lift holy hands. Lord, my prayer for this morning is that your presence would be more real to us than our own. More real to us than problems. More real to us than challenges and sickness. More real to us than the world itself. You are our world. You're our life. And it's in you we live, move, and have our being. I just, I feel that the Lord is pouring his joy into hearts this morning. His strengthening joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, you know, right where you are, just receive the joy of the Lord. Just the, the delight. The Bible calls the presence of the Holy Spirit, the river of delight. It's okay to be filled with joy. It's okay to be happy. It's a blessing, the blessing of His presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Fill your people with joy unspeakable and full of glory. How we love you. You know, the Bible says, they looked unto Him and their faces were radiant. They looked to the one who shines and so they began shining. It's the resplendent joy. You know, the, they asked the Shulamite, what is the big deal about your beloved? One of the things she said is, he is dazzling. He's shining. He shines like the sun. He is resplendent. That beautiful light, the light of his presence, Jesus himself, is our joy. He said that. He said, I say these things that your joy might be full. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we want to get lost in your presence today. And we have no desire to recover when we leave. Hallelujah. Have your way. Have your way. Just lift your hands one more time. Ha say this, Lord Jesus. Come on, with boldness. Lord Jesus, have your way in me today. Do whatever you need to do, whatever you want to do. I surrender to you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now fill the house with praise. Come on, fill the house with praise. a good morning. Say it back then. Come on, say good morning. Come on, give the Lord praise one more time. One more time. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Worship you. Oh, thank you, Lord. All right, 
find a few people and love them. Come on. Tell them Jesus loves them. Can we let the worship team know how thankful we are? They, I'm telling you, they give a lot. They give a lot. We love you. Love you. You know, I knew I loved them, but now they all wear Bass Pro Shop hats. That's how you know God has blessed all of you with a legit worship team. Isn't that amazing? For you. <laughs> All right, what do we got here, babe? So good morning, everybody. So I'm going to do a few announcements, but before I do that, um, when we were worshiping, I felt like the Lord is healing fibromyalgia this morning. And I also heard sleep apnea when we were worshiping. So can we pray for that real quick? You might be in the room. Maybe you're watching online. Does anyone have fibromyalgia in the room? Can you stand? We're just going to stretch our hands and sleep apnea. Okay. Come on, church. You know what to do. All right. Anyone online? Let yeah. Let me help them. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> stretch your hands. If you're near them and they're okay with it, you can put your hand there on their shoulder. Yes. Go ahead, baby. Yeah. And if you're watching online, just yeah. receive this as well. Holy Spirit, we welcome you right now into this place. Jesus, you are the Lord that heals Jesus. So Lord, I thank you right now that this pain from fibromyalgia goes right now in Jesus' name. We command every single thing that does not line up with the yes. word of God to go right now in, in the name of name. Jesus. Sleep apnea, go. Sleep deprivation, go right now in the name of Jesus. Praise. Sleepless nights, Praise. we command you to have peace. Jesus, in Jesus', Jesus name, Jesus. Lord. We thank you, Father, for healing your Amen. children. It is your will, it's always been your will to heal Jesus. Hallelujah. And we receive that healing right now in Jesus' name. Severe migraines go right now in the name of Jesus. Joint pain, nerve damage, I command you to go right Come now on, in Jesus' you. name. Just receive it. You don't have to work for it. Just vision issues it. go right now. You see blurry, but Jesus is restoring your vision right now in the name of Jesus. Um, somebody has. Um, again, joint pain. The Lord is healing you right now. On the left side of your body, you get severe swelling and joint around your hip area. Thank the Lord you. is healing you right now in Jesus' name, Lord. Even if I didn't call it out, receive your healing in Jesus' name. We thank you, God. From thank the top you. of our heads to the soles of our feet, we are healed in the name of Jesus. Come on, everyone agree. We thank you in just, Jesus' just agree, name. agree, agree. Amen. Everyone agree. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Did anyone who received prayer or anything Jesse called out or not, and you felt something in your body shift, up, or even if you didn't, begin testing your body right now. Come on, these are the best announcements ever. I don't even know what fibromyalgia is, so that's how I know it's the Lord. Is it pain in your, it, okay, so start So moving. just start doing something you couldn't do. If you felt relief in your body, I want you to lift your hand when you do. Even if it's slight, I want your hand to go up. That's how you begin to celebrate what the Lord is doing. Yep, there's one in the back. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Would you stand up a minute with the lady in the back? See, what happens is we, we haven't done a whole lot of this on Sunday mornings yet, and we, we need to. That's, yep, you too, Ruth. Awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Ryan, grab a microphone. How many of you think this is better than announcement? All right. So, the ma'am in the back, would you lift your hand and keep it up till Ryan gets to you? Let somebody raise their hand in the back there in the back right corner. Oh, there's another one. Thank you, Jesus. Yep, yep, right there, Ryan. Start, start right there. Yep. What happened? Good morning. So, um, where are you from? Yeah, from um, Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. Um, you, she said something about like your left side, yeah. and for quite a few years, I've just had 
off and on um, inflammation and pain in my left side. Uh -huh. And it just felt like a decrease, specifically in my hip area when you prayed that. Yeah. Praise Seriously. God. Thank, thank you. you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. All right. There was another, not somebody else right there. Somebody right there. Look how sharp Ryan looks. What happened? In August 2019, I was stopped at a stoplight and a woman hit me in a Jeep. And Jesus told me during the service that she broke my neck and that's why during my neck surgery last year, they had to remove a bone out of my spine. And I'm the woman with the migraines and the sleeplessness. Thank you, Jessica. What happened this morning? Did you feel anything? I have a torn Achilles tendon in my left side. It hurts a lot. And the lady in front of me <laughs> couldn't feel the pain I was in and the spasm mean standing during worship. And I got some relief, so thank you. You did get relief during worship. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Let's take one more. Let's take, I want to hear from Ruth, Ryan. I want to hear from Ruth here. Ruth eats gluten-free, by the way, in case you don't know her. Now you know her. I've been believing that God would heal me from fibromyalgia for a while now, and there's these pain points around your body, that, and they always hurt. And as I was pushing this one, there's no pain. And I actually don't have any pain in my body right now for a Sunday that's unheard of. Praise the Lord. Thank you for Praise the Lord. Uh, go sit with her. Just sit right there, Ruth. Right, when you begin sharing, I felt the power of God flow. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for Ruth. Thank, come on, everyone just agree with me. I don't need you to cheer or anything. Just agree in your heart. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, for your healing power. Thank you for the stripes of Jesus where we are healed, whereby we are healed, whereby Ruth is healed. Now we, the church, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rebuke fibromyalgia in you and all over this room. I'm telling you, there's power flowing this morning. So if, if you had need of healing, you just give the Lord your body and move your body by faith. Receive in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What do you feel, Ruth? I just feel warm. Warm. Yeah, me too. <laughs> hmm? I want to hear what she has to say. Yeah. I just feel Jesus and warm. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else feel the Lord heal their body? I'll take, we'll take one more. We're going to ride the wind of the Spirit. Yep. Let me take this one first, and then we'll see. Yeah. Is that Vitria? Yep, go ahead, Ryan. <laughs> no, let me help you. Let me help you, everybody here. Not you, Ryan. This will help you. But Seriousness does not release the power of God but neither does a lack of the fear of the Lord. Yeah. So you have to learn to be very grateful and in awe without obstructing and quenching the move of the Holy Spirit. And so being relaxed, it doesn't mean you sitting there like you're at a Woodstock convention, or con I don't think they had conventions, but. Oh, the Lord's touching me now. That's wonderful. Thank you, Lord. So just relax and be in awe. That's the best way to be in the presence of Jesus. What happened, Vitria? Um, I had hurt my knee working out just a few days ago. And um, the whole morning during worship, it was in pain. Um, it was hurting. But when we were praying um, for the people that you had stand up, like I felt a release and it's not really hurting anymore. You much. were dancing hard <laughs> earlier. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess. 
<laughs> I love that. But the pain is... Thank you, Lord. Like, it's, it's not gone completely, but there's a... Come a on, release. let's stretch our hands. Yeah. Lord Jesus, thank you for completely healing Vitria. Vitria, just say this to the Lord. Jesus, I give you my body. I place it in your hands. You are the healer. Thank you for healing me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now check for your healing. It still feels a little tight, but there's not really any pain. No more pain? So, yeah. Good. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. There was one more girl, one more. One more young lady there. I saw her. She had her hand up. Right there in the middle. You got it, Ryan? Hi. Hi. What um, happened? Didn't so you get baptized a few months ago? I did. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> it was amazing. So every, everything that you said, Jess, I've walked through my whole life. It started with migraines that led into sleep apnea. And then I, they said they diagnosed me with fibromyalgia, which led to me being in the hospital for two months two weeks oh, with man. paralysis to the left side of my body. And so when we prayed, I just felt like there was just a spirit that just was removed from me. What, <laughs> what do you mean by that? Like, tell me what that was like. It's like I don't know, like when you, if you're walking through the forest and you see a very deep, dense spider web and you walk through it and now it's still on you, but the moment that we just pray, the presence of the Lord just kind of like grabbed and removed it and filled it. With How do you himself. feel now? I feel like I'm just ahead, like nobody. <laughs> like you're just, ahead? Yeah, just like just floating in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Completely. Oh, that's funny. Thank you, Lord. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he trustworthy? Trustworthy. Oh, why don't you close your eyes right now and just receive the, just the blessed presence of the Lord. Yeah. Just lift your hands to heaven. Say, Jesus, here I am. Fill me up today. On Pentecost, fill me up today. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Is there anyone else? You felt the Lord healed you. There in the back. Let's do one more. Come on. Isn't this awesome? What a good problem to have. Thank you, Lord. Ryan, you need to work on your routing. Hi. Hi. What um, happened? Well, during worship, I got this vision of, like, angels pouring oil on me. And I was like, okay, Lord, I don't know what that means, but I receive it. And um, when Jessica called out fibromyalgia, I was like, oh, that's me, Lord. That's what you were talking about. And so um, I felt the fire of God hit me. And um, she, the lady just kind of confirmed what happened to me. I felt something leave. But I didn't really understand at that moment what was going on. And I just started to shake. And um, something left. So were you, are you from Orlando? I'm from St. Augustine. From St. Augustine. I love St. Augustine. <laughs> um, so were you in pain when you came in? Yes. And then are you in pain now? I have slight pain. I get the swelling that Jessica was talking about. Okay, and then so where was your pain when you walked in and where would you say it is now? Uh, well, my pain moves around, but right now it's on the right side. And then how bad is it? It's like on a level of one to ten. It's like a four. A four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's, uh, let's stretch our hands towards her, precious sister in the Lord. Father in heaven, thank you for the stripes of Jesus that are our healing. Thank you for healing her. What's your name? Sarah. Sarah. Thank you for healing Sarah. In Jesus' name.
by the stripes of Jesus, Sarah is healed. That's what your word says. We stand on your promises. I pray she'd never know another day of pain. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. I want us to all seal that and celebrate it with praise. Come on. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, let's all stand and give the Lord praise. Come on. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. All right, you can be seated. You know, when you... You have to prove to the Lord that you are thankful for everything he does. And collectively, as a people, as a family, we have to do that. That actually invites the Lord to come in greater measure, to come and move with greater power. You'll notice that the first people in this room usually to jump up and honor or jump up and thank people are our students because this is ingrained into them daily. We express our thanksgiving. Few things irritate the Lord and me more than when God begins healing people and people sit like this. Oh, man. I think some of you may have been there on a Sunday night where I lovingly dealt with that. <laughs> but really, really, at the moment you begin to treat healing and miracles as common... It actually sends a message to Jesus that you're not thankful for his stripes. And by the way, he had many more than 39 wounds on his body. They may have striped him 39 times, but there were, his body was covered in wounds. So, so we, when we thank him, we, we are announcing to him, to the Father, to the Holy Spirit, to the angels of heaven, to, the, to, to heaven itself, that we are grateful for the immense price paid for our healing. Yes. And what happens is, is he begins to entrust you with greater miracles. Yes. The worldly mindset says, you know, if you've, if, if you've got such an anointing, why, why aren't uh, tumors falling out of people? I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen, a tu I've seen somebody spit up a tumor who had, a lady had her, a tumor in her uterus, she spit some of it up, and the rest came out of her body. Let's just say that. The stuff that came up out of her mouth fell at my feet. She was completely cancer-free after having stage 4 cancer. In a moment. So I just, I just want to be clear. We've seen that. I've seen that. But if we're going to move together as a family, we have to prove to heaven that we are grateful for the allergy healing. Yeah. See, everybody thinks allergies are small healing unless you've got them. You know, flu's not a big deal unless you're the one over the toilet yakking. Big deal at that point. You know, if for all those of you who've been on a Daniel fast, nobody here wants to be allergic to dairy or meat, right? It all matters when it's yours. And so that's how we want to live and be. All right? Announcements. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. The Lord's so good. I've been, I was praying for that this morning, just that the Lord would heal his people. And it just, the Holy Spirit is so amazing how he talks in that still voice. And you have a chance to respond to that and take a risk and step out in faith and maybe look stupid for a moment if you're off. Or you can just trust the yielding of the Holy Spirit and, and do it. And Amen. so I'm, I'm just thankful to Jesus that, that I was obedient this morning Amen. so th thank you okay um so announcements can we put the graphic up for the members gathering so this tuesday it's coming we're into that minimal thing i told you last i week. guess so that there it is the announcement right there okay tuesday correct at harvest time international which is in samford florida what carla time? you might have to come give the address carla, because what what time 7, 7 p.m yeah, so this is a chance for us to get to know you. We are so thankful. We're blown away. Every Sunday we walk in here and thank the Lord for what he's doing. It's still, I still pinch myself. And we just want to get to know you more, spend time with you. Michael and I will be there. Our whole team will be there. So this is going to be this Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Carla, what's... There it, there is. it is. Okay. All right. 
Harvest Time International, 225 Harvest Time Drive. See how easy wow. that address is for you to I remember? Want our own address That's one day. amazing. This Tuesday, May Jesus 25th. Drive. That would be awesome. Yeah. Um, 7 p.m. It will help for us. If, if you could register, it will help for us to know how much um, refreshments and food to get. So please register if you are going to attend. This is for people that feel like Jesus Image is their home. It's their church. This is your family. We want to get to know you. Or if you're thinking about making Jesus Image your home church, we would love to get to know you too. So you can text 321-320-8040. You text member to that number. Yeah, and so really, we're not. I'm not going to preach. We're just going to sit down and share the vision uh, of the house with you, and um, give you the opportunity to really connect at a heart level. And then uh, we're going to take some time afterwards just to get to talk to some of you and meet you. And really looking forward to it. It's a bit difficult at times on Sundays, just because we have to prepare for Sunday night, and um, which have been electric by the way, as, as these are. Um, so this is really going to give us the time and space to, to get the time with you that we want. So yeah, so be there. Anything else? That's it. We All love right. you. Yeah. Well, anything else, Carla? No? Okay. Yeah. All right. Let Jesse know you love her. Okay, one more. Actually, uh, this Thursday, our crew leaves uh, for our first Jesus night on the road, which will be awesome. Yep, yep, the Lord, you know, when the church began, we stopped calling the gatherings Jesus nights here in Orlando. It was just became the church. Uh, as you know, they started as Jesus nights. But um, I, I felt like the Lord said, don't do away with Jesus nights. Lay it down for a season. And um, what are they texting that for? Oh, I think they're already full. Let's take that down. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but uh, the Lord put it on my heart that they needed to hit the road and that we needed to export what the Lord was doing here around America. How many of you think America needs Jesus? All right. And that's what we're going to do. So we're, going, we're uh, going to covenant houses that we have deep relationship with, and I'm so thrilled that we're starting at Upper Room. And so our first, pray for our team. I'm going to ask all of you over the next week. We leave Thursday. We'll be back Saturday. Our whole crew will be back here for church Sunday morning. And uh, <laughs> we're coming back, and we'll be, we'll be there Sunday night. But our first one will be there, and I, I've, I've felt for a long time that God would build something beautiful here that we could give away in authenticity. And that's really our heart. So there are other churches that we will be going to as well um, in 2021. I think we've got Houston yes. uh, in July. We're going to the Dwelling Place and some other amazing houses that, uh, that uh, you'll hear about. And they're going to be very powerful. So pray for us. I really feel like this is almost like the crusade arm of what's been birthed here at the church. Yeah. That what's happened here and at Jesus 20, Jesus 19 and 18, that this will start flooding America. Amen? All right, so keep us in prayer. Let's give to the Lord. Take your Bibles. Yeah, yeah, there you go, students. There you go. And, and church, there you are. I just heard you too. All right, good job. Proverbs 3 9. Proverbs 3 9. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your presses will burst out with new wine. Say honor. honor. Say it out loud. Honor. Say it out loud. Honor, honor is currency in heaven. So is faith. Faith moves heaven and honor moves heaven. But it's not the only thing that moves heaven, the only two, but those are two currencies that move heaven and actually birth impact here in the earth. Think about honor for a moment. 
When somebody goes on to be with the Lord, what does the Lord express to them? Honor. How does he do that? Many ways in heaven. We receive a crown. The martyrs are under the altar of God. In other words, they have a front row seat to the throne. God honors those who are faithful to him. Anytime we express honor on earth, it moves the heart of God because it is his nature. Now, when Stephen died, Jesus had been eternally seated at the right hand of the Father. Think about that. It's a big deal, the seating, what we call the session of the Lord, his actual seating and enthronement. So when we sing songs like Arise to or from your rest and be blessed by our praise, we are talking about that enthronement. I want you to think about this for a moment. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father as the eternal king. Okay, and we'll, we'll get into that on another Sunday. But when Stephen died, was Jesus seated or was he standing? Standing. What was he doing? Why did he stand for Stephen's death? Say honor. America is losing its honor at a rapid pace. We, we only honor people we vote for. You don't have to like them, but honor is unconditional. It doesn't matter how jacked up your parents are. You honor them. Well, they did this. Now you're letting their sin become your sin. Stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> stupid. So stupid. But you get away from Jesus, you get stupid. <laughs> the best way to get dumb is to leave the presence of God. And then you can give your stupidity away, and that can, becomes a culture. It's really awesome. This is the offering still. I don't know how, but we'll, we'll find our way home. Honor. Now listen, listen, listen. Honor, when we talk about honoring our parents, for instance, Jesus connected honor to taking care of them financially. So what we do here is we lock old people up in a home and never go visit them and tell them we're too busy to honor them because we're doing other stuff. So Jesus actually addressed that. He said, you say you're honoring your parents because you're giving that money to the temple that he never asked for. And you've made the commandments of God null and void because of the traditions of men. So there Jesus connects honor to giving. All right. So it is impossible, let me say this very boldly, to fully honor the Lord and not bring him an offering. It's not to say you don't love him. I'm just saying according to his definition of honor, that is actually connected to bringing him an offering according to Proverbs 3. Honor the Lord with your, you tell me, you tell me what it says. With your possessions, with your wealth. So when we come into the presence of Jesus, we honor him by giving to him what he has already given to us. Say amen. That's who, that's who the Jesus people are. They actually would rather the Lord disturb them and discomfort them than be disobedient. I learned this at a young age. My parents didn't. We lived in a 700 square foot studio condo. It wasn't even a one bedroom. It was a studio. My parents slept on the bed. It had an accordion pool wall. And my brother and I each slept on the couch, on a different couch. So I understand this. But something my parents ingrained in me was, it doesn't matter how things are going, we obey Jesus. That changes how things are going. Do you understand? And so I don't believe, I've been praying that the Lord would protect you during this time and what's going on in the economy. The other night I was driving home from Jacksonville. I had to go to three gas stations to, to get gas. I, I was like, man, I'm going to, Jesse's going to have to come pick me up on I-95. I, I, I couldn't find gas. The, the, the nations are, di, dis, they're being disturbed right now. I'm not just praying that God would protect you. I actually believe God will bless you so you can fund the gospel in this season. I'm not stopping at protection. I believe God can bless you so that the nations can be born again. And so, so we come into his presence 
with honor bursting forth, telling the Lord how grateful we are by our offering. So let's give this morning. You can text GIVE to 321-32. If you're here, sorry, I messed up again. Text GIVE to the number on the screen. Did I do good, babe? All right. If you need an envelope and you do not want to give by text to give, would you just lift your hand? Okay. Ushers, would you help me? Keep your hands up until you receive your offering, your offering envelope. Would you help me? Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Joel just manifests. (laughs) But really, look at the promise here. Honor the Lord with your substance and with your first fruits. That's the tithe of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your presses bursting out with new wine. The Lord has promised abundance for His glory as we honor the Lord. So Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the privilege of giving, for the honor of it. We come into your presence this morning to honor you and to say thank you. Now I do pray in Jesus' name that you would touch your people and bless them. I thank you that you you are protecting them, but you are going to bless them so that the name of Jesus will be glorified in the earth and that the gospel would reach every tribe, people, and tongue. In Jesus' name, make us an honorable people. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're watching online, we love you. We're so grateful for you. Everywhere I go, I hear from you. It's such an honor that you would tune in. If this ministry has blessed you, We want to encourage you to give as well. And you can text give to that number on your screen. And we pray the blessing of God over you as well. All right, we'll be right back. Bless you guys. If you'd like to give uh, and just rush the buckets, you can do that as well. We'll be back in just a moment. Thank you, Father, for your word. Come on, everyone engaging the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for your your goodness. We pray, Lord, that our hearts would be open. We actually declare that they are open, and our hearts are yours. So speak in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Yeah. 
That was lame. That did not sound like Pentecostals. Today is Pentecost Sunday. There you go. There you go. All right. Pentecost is um, it's really a holy time. I'd like you to take your Bibles to Deuteronomy 16, 9. I'm not going to preach long. Deuteronomy 16.9. You shall count seven weeks for yourself. Begin to count the seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the grain. Then you shall keep the feast of weeks to the Lord your God with the tribute of a free will offering from your hand which you shall give as the Lord your God blesses you. You shall rejoice before the Lord your God. It's okay to be happy. I said it's okay to be happy. You and your son and your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, the Levite who is within your gates, the stranger and the fatherless and the widow who are among you at the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. And you shall remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and you shall be careful to observe these statutes. Seven times seven is 49. Pentecost is called basically the day of 50, measuring 50 days from Passover to Pentecost. All right. Now... It was known as the Feast of Weeks, and the harvest was celebrated. Let me explain that to you. Well, actually, let me back up. A few things were celebrated on Pentecost. One, first fruits. Bring the Lord an offering, first fruits. Deuteronomy. Number two, the harvest, the Feast of Wheat, or the harvest. Number three, as we move into the book of Acts, obviously the Lord poured out his spirit on that day. Now, when did Jesus ascend to the right hand of the Father? How many days after his resurrection? Forty. Say forty. All right, all right. Get you that Bible reading plan. We'll get it to you. Forty days after Jesus' resurrection, he ascended on high. Okay, he was raised from the dead. On the third day, between the third day and the 40th day, he was appearing to people. I'm going to get stuck there if I jump on that rabbit trail. But that's pretty amazing. He walked through a wall and had the holy audacity to tell the disciples, peace be unto you. Now, how many of you know if someone comes through a wall with a body... You're probably not at peace initially. You would think, well, it was Jesus. No, no, they were freaked out, and that's why he said, peace, peace, I give you. Okay. If I saw an angel, I wouldn't be afraid. Yeah, you would. They all say, fear not. Every one of them says, fear not in the Bible. You would. You absolutely would. So Jesus appears to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, talks to them, eats with them, Amazingly, their eyes aren't open to recognize him until he has a meal with them. Communion's powerful. Come to the table. That old song, come and dine, come and dine. Wasn't your dad singing that to me the other night? Come and dine. Something happens when you eat with other believers in the presence of Jesus. You come to the table of the Lord, your eyes open. They could not see Jesus until they ate with him. So Jesus is not a historical figure for your PowerPoint. Of course you can't see him. If you just want him to be your help, you know, the guy who helps you along. Oh, I've never seen. No, no, no. You come to him to chew on him and meditate on him through the scriptures. Your eyes open to see him. So he appeared. On the 40th day, by the Spirit, he was taken to heaven. We call that the ascension. We touched on that last week. Now, Pentecost is on the 50th day. 
All right, you ready? You guys ready for some uh, advanced honors math here? How many days between 40 and 50? Oh, we have the wisest. We are, we're going to put all of y'all into a Britannica convention. Spelling bee, math stuff, science. You get to the science place. The science. What is that place called? The Science Center. Jesse loves it there. Jess could be mayor of Orlando. She loves everything in Orlando. She's the only person who doesn't mind I for. That's how I knew we were called here. All right. Ten days. Are you ready now? Pentecost on the 50th day. He ascended on the 40th day. Taken to heaven by the Spirit. Basically lifted by his Father by the Spirit. And throned. And ten days later, Pentecost comes. All right. The Scriptures teach that the disciples were in one accord for those, two, those 10 days praying. A 10-day prayer meeting. 10-day prayer meeting. <sighs> and they had just walked with Jesus for three and a half years. Now, most people would say that their resume was weighty enough to begin their ministry without waiting on the Lord for 10 days and without the empowerment of the Spirit. Now, most people manage, or I should say they focus, they major, on the words of the Great Commission, which, by the way, it is a Great Commission. But what we fail to remember is that it is a commission, not a mission. Unless he goes with you, you're on your own. I tried that, and it doesn't work. And a lot of people try that. A lot of people call themselves. A lot of people want to anoint themselves. A lot of people start 501c3s on the computer. It doesn't mean they have ministry. Okay. What we fail to remember too often is that, yes, Jesus said, go into the world and make disciples. That's what we're doing here. It's why we have cameras. It's why... We we have events. It's why we gather the masses. It's why we disciple. Yeah, of course, of course. But that, listen carefully, only happens if you wait in Jerusalem and are endued with power from on high. See, we remember the go, but the wait makes us really uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't mean soak, I mean wait. I don't mean sloking, sleeping and soaking. Like they, one of the kids, when our kids were at school in Reading, the, the chaplain of the kids got up during chapel. He goes, guys, no sloking today. I go, what is sloking? The little kids would be checking out on the beanbags, acting like they were praying. They'd be sleeping. <laughs> Called it sloking. All right. So here you have the disciples, 120. Does anybody remember how many years the Lord told humanity they would have after they sinned so greatly? Anybody remember that? Say 120. It is found in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. Let me read it to you. My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Say flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. So the Lord was so grieved, he called out the fleshiness, the fleshliness of men and women. And, and, and told them their days on earth would be 120 years. I don't think it's irresponsible scripturally to connect the, word, the number 120 with the flesh. So I'm going somewhere here. Last week we talked about how beautiful and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You know this from the Psalms. 
It is like the oil being poured out upon the head of Aaron. Aaron is a type and shadow of Jesus. And that oil running down his beard, the face of Jesus, down his garments, even to the hem of his garments. So here we see the connection between the anointed Messiah King, who rules and reigns forever in heaven, and the oil finding its way down through the body into the hem which were those 120 on the earth who would receive the empowerment of the Spirit. All right. We talked about that last week. Isn't this wonderful? All right. How many of you remember a tower in the Old Testament that reached really high? What was the name of it? All right. Let's look at that for a minute. Genesis chapter 11. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. Say speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, come let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, come let us build ourselves. Say those two words. Build ourselves. Say it again. Build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves. Say ourselves. Lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us, us, God is three in one, go down and there confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the earth. Who built Babel? Say people. All right, hold on here. Babel began on the ground. Man said, I will build this, so Babel moved from the ground up. That is always the direction of the flesh. It starts with me. I will do it. I've got this. I know how to build. I just need to find a bunch of people who talk like I do. And I'll use that unyielded, unsurrendered unity. And we will do great things for God. God doesn't need us to do great things for him. God only receives what he does himself. No flesh, 120, no flesh shall glory in his presence. See, what we cannot do is raise people up into believing that if they start something, God will eventually bless it. No, he will not. God only blesses what God births. If God has not birthed it, God will not bless it. Wait ye in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Before you go, catch fire. That's basically what Jesus said. Babel, the work of the flesh, the culture of Babylon is to build something great. And the motive is, look, it's right there in your Bibles, that we would be known on the earth. Let us make a name for ourselves. That's the work of the flesh. Pentecost, listen carefully, 
is all about the Holy Spirit coming down. Babel is all about man going. Basically, satanic, the culture of satanic motive and language is this. I will. I will. Example. The enemy says through the prophet, I will ascend to the hill of the north. I will. I will be like the most high. I will take my throne. I, 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 I. Then you have Jesus, who I love, I love what Bill Johnson says. It's not the opposite of the devil. The devil's not that good. <laughs> he says the devil is the opposite of like Michael and Gabriel. He's not even worthy of being the opposite of the devil. However, the culture of his heart, the sinfulness, is absolutely in opposition of what Jesus is like. And Jesus begins healing the sick. They're blown away by the healings. And he says, it's my father doing it all. Was Jesus doing it? Of course. But it was the father in him. And Jesus refused to point to anyone else. So in Babel, we see man's ability. Man can get a lot done. But in the end, it's nothing. Think about it. Think about, can I have 10 more minutes? We got sidetracked by miracles. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Praise Jesus. I used to live in Las Vegas when I was still playing golf. But you drive through Las Vegas, you see man can do a lot. They can raise a lot of money. They can build stuff. I was in an earthquake there. I thought, oh, God, you're judging Vegas, and I'm here? What's going on? I was thrown out of the chair. It was my first earthquake. I was thrown out of the bed in the middle of the night. They build buildings there on wheels, on rollers. So when the ground starts moving, the buildings go with them. You'd be scared, too. <laughs> Guarantee you, when the table starts going that way six feet, and you're going with it... <laughs> When the ground under you, the most immovable, natural uh, scenario in your life, which is the ground you stand on, when that starts going, you, you, you freak out. And I did. I jumped up and ran out of the house in the middle of the night. It's crazy. They can do a lot there. Their, their, their hotels move. There's fountains that dance to music and lights. How much of that's going to matter at the throne? So it's not to say that man can't pull off a lot it's just to say that what we pull off in and of ourselves means nothing in the end that is the work of the flesh that is the work of 120 that is the work of Babel it is the heartbeat of Babylon a system that is opposed to King Jesus that system thrives on fear, division, manipulation, anger, demands. It all sounds like wisdom, but it imprisons everybody who grabs it. Let me be very clear. None of us deserve anything but hell. That's the truth. If you want to talk about what we deserve, but for grace, our eternal destiny is the lake of fire. That's the posture of a child of God. So here you see the capabilities, the capabilities of the flesh, and they are grand to the eye, but they do not last in eternity. Now listen carefully. The Bible teaches that one day we will stand before the throne and give an account for everything we've done in the body. That's Paul's words who was the apostle of grace. His words were, one day we'll give an account. The only things that, we will, that will be accredited to our account are the things that the Spirit has birthed that we yielded to and allowed him to accomplish. So it's not to say that you shouldn't start a business. No. Start a business that the Spirit has birthed. 
have a business that the Spirit moves you into making proper decisions. And then maybe they don't seem proper to, 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 to natural wisdom. By the way, only God is wise. So we see that you have this issue of the flesh, this Babel-like lifestyle, which is I will build something grand from the ground up. And now you see the coming of the Spirit is from heaven downward. It is to say this. You can't, God speaking, you can't do it without me. You need me, so I'm coming down. All right, this is awesome. Now, the same moment took place for Jesus. He received the power of the Holy Spirit at the Jordan. Now listen carefully. I could teach you all the history on Pentecost, and it would do you good. But I'd rather you get lit up in the flame of God, and then I'll teach you from there. I think it's best. Let the bomb go off, and then we'll pastor in the chaos. I just think that's best. I think that's the best way to do it. Let the bomb hit. A bunch of stuff will happen. A lot of it will be God. Some of it probably won't. We'll do our best to help you with that which is not the Lord and encourage you to go deeper in the Spirit. And we'll all do it together. Okay. For the bomb to go off, you have to know what pulls on heaven. What is God looking for? What is magnetic about certain people? They seem to be a magnet for the power of the Holy Spirit. What is he looking for? You ready? Say lowliness. lowliness. All right, let's look at this now. Let's look at this. Have you ever tried praying for 10 days? In a room? With a bunch of people? 120 in that room? I've been in that room. They were hiding for their lives. It's not as though Jerusalem was, a, was the fan club of Jesus of Nazareth. They had just crucified him. What did they do? They hid themselves in prayer. All right. They were in one accord. What does that mean? Yes, their hearts were connected, but what were they praying about? The one thing Jesus told them to pray about. Wait in Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. They touched one thing in agreement for 10 days. Now, I've got news for you. The Holy Spirit has already come. You don't need to wait 10 days. You should say, thank you, Jesus. You don't need to wait 10 days. But it is to say this is a biblical pattern. Loneliness and humility precedes outpouring. She's outpouring. If you don't see it in the life of Jesus, don't believe me. But you also see this pattern in the life of Jesus. Example. Jesus comes to the River Jordan... His cousin is baptizing people, whom, by the way, he created. He created John. He called John. He's the one who spoke to Zechariah through Gabriel. Gabriel stood in the presence of the preexistent word, Jesus, for eternity past. Jesus shows up on the shores of the Jordan. I feel the Holy Spirit now. Jesus shows up on the shores of the Jordan. Prior to John seeing him, I shared this with you a month ago. John, before he sees Jesus, he says, there's one standing among you whose sandals I'm not worthy to unloose. So John picked up on that presence. He goes, ah, he's out there. I know that presence. I jumped around in my mama's womb when he was in his mama's womb. He got near me, and I just started jumping around. He's the one who called me. He's the one who's been talking to me in the wilderness all these years. God does everything as three in one. Of course Jesus was involved in John's calling. Jesus is God. So G John's there. He's ah, there's one standing among you. In other words, there's thousands on the shore. He's going, I don't see him, but I feel him. Never shortchange feeling his presence. It precedes. You steward that sense, the sense of his presence, he'll open your eyes. So finally, Jesus shows up and John introduces him to Israel. This is what he says. Behold the Lamb of God. Why? Why the Lamb of God? He was 
pointing Israel back to Abraham's words, the Lord will provide a lamb. Remember when he offered Isaac? And finally the Lord said, don't kill your boy. What did Abraham say prior to that? The Lord will provide a lamb. Isaac said, where's the lamb? Oh, I have the wood. I'm carrying the wood. I'm carrying the cross up the mountain. It was a type and shadow. One and only son, the miracle child, about to die. And Isaac goes, wait, we've got everything we need. Where's the lamb? And Abraham says, the Lord will provide a lamb. All of a sudden, you see the lamb highlighted again in Exodus 12. Do you not? A lamb, the blood of the lamb on every house. They eat the lamb at Passover. Isaiah 53, Isaiah says this, that he was led like a lamb to slaughter. Again, we see the lamb. And John now stands at the shores. He sees Jesus. He goes, there he is. That's the one who's been announced for generations. The lamb of God who takes away the sins of of the entire world. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. Listen carefully. He first introduces him as lamb and then as the baptizer. You must have blood before you have fire. You must have sacrifice before you have oil. Salvation precedes the filling of the Spirit. Many of you in this room will have the opportunity today to give your life to Jesus. You cannot walk in the presence of God, which is life itself, by the way, outside of His blood cleansing you. To not live under the blood is to live under the influence of the world. It's to live in darkness, the Bible says. It's to live in opposition of God. The Scripture says you cannot love God in the world. So Jesus steps on the scene as the promised one who will baptize in the Holy Spirit and fire, and he walks up to John, to his creation, his cousin. And John, being a man of the Spirit, the greatest in history up to that time, he goes, uh, now look, I know who you are. I've known you since I was in my mama's womb. One thing I do know, uh, I shouldn't be baptizing you. Like, I may not know everything. But the one thing I get right now is that uh, you should baptize me. <laughs> he knew Jesus was of the ancient past. You can't get around his presence and hear his voice and not recognize him when he comes your way. So he goes, uh, this isn't right. You baptize me. And Jesus says, for righteousness sake, let's do it. What was John's baptism unto? Say repentance. Did Jesus have to repent of anything? Why was he being baptized? To identify with you. To become the true replacement. The true patterned son. The true offering who could identify with us on every front. Jesus knows what it's like to be a baby. Which makes him the Savior. Who can identify on all fronts. So Jesus says, no, for righteousness sake, do it. And John baptizes the Lord. Quick question. When you're baptized, does your body go up? Or down. Say humility. Mm. When you wash people's feet, do you go up or down? When Babel was built, did it go up or down? Up. When the devil wanted to take the throne, did he want to go up or down? The pattern of Jesus is to go low. Is to go low to be baptized by his cousin. And then what happened? The heavens opened. And the Spirit came down. It will always be that pattern. God will clothe the humble with his very glory. That's why the Bible says, don't promote yourself. He exalts, listen, the lowly, exalts the humble and resists the proud. 
proud is Babel, the lowly come down. With every head bowed and eye closed. This morning, I want to tell you, on this, every head bowed and eye closed, please, I want to tell you, on this wonderful, amazing day, this holy day of Pentecost, if you have never lived a life in the presence of God, you don't know the Holy Spirit, you can. You can. Salvation is not just about getting rid of your sin. It's about God, the Holy Spirit, coming to live inside of you forever and ever. He literally has given us His very own spirit and in his spirit is righteousness peace joy freedom from sin listen carefully freedom from bondage Jesus said this is eternal life that they might know the one true God and Jesus Christ whom you've sent you can really know Jesus Eternal life is not just going to heaven forever, though that is part of the, of, of the blessedness of it. Eternal life is living a life now free, knowing that God has made you righteous. Listen carefully. God doesn't give you your own new righteousness when you come to Jesus. He gives you His Son's own righteousness, and you become the very righteousness of God. If you're not in peace, it's because Jesus is not in the boat. Jesus says again this morning, my peace I give to you. The scriptures promise righteousness and peace, but righteousness is a person and peace is a person. And all of it is found in the presence of the Holy Spirit that belongs to those who have yielded their life fully, listen carefully, fully to Jesus. Not by name, not by prayer only, not by attendance only, no, no, no. Not by reading your Bible at night, oh, no, 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 no. A great man of God once said, John Kilpatrick, he said this, before the revival hit there in Brownsville. I don't want a new church. I don't want a new Bible. I don't want a new ministry. I want you. I want you. You can't read enough devotionals to get saved. You can't attend enough church meetings to stand in righteousness, to know the peace of God. No, you have to literally offer your life to Jesus and follow him. You cannot live with one foot in the world to live a life on the fence, in and out, and doing your little prayers at night and call that the Christian life. Friend, if you do that, you're gambling with your very soul. The first job, the first privilege of the Spirit is to turn men and women to Jesus. That's his first ministry. That's why John said, Behold the Lamb of God. Today, listen carefully, friends. The reason he's called the Lamb is because he took your place. The Lord has provided the Lamb. He bled so you would not have to. He died so you would not have to. He suffered shame so you would not have to. He was buried he took your death. He, he was raised from the dead. So you could be convinced that the moment you close your eyes, you will be in the presence of the Lord. If you want to come to Jesus tonight, today, I'm in fully. And give the Lord your life. Fully. Fully for yourself. Not because your family follows the Lord. Fully for you. I want you to lift your hand very quickly and put it down. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I want everyone to stand, please. I feel the love of God. I feel the love of God. Ryan, can you move this pulpit, please, buddy? Friends, listen very carefully. Listen carefully. 
The heaven is not caught up on, ha- on altar calls. So maybe you're saying right now, you know, I've been to one. I was, I was, I've been to one when I was eight. No, no, that's not about that. Are you living the Christian life? That's the proof. Not which altar you went to. Are you living a life yielded to Jesus? Children, if you're in the room and you feel in your heart that you want to give your life to Jesus today, I want you to look at your mom and dad, and in just a moment, when I give the invitation to come forward, I'm going to invite you to come forward. If you raise your hand to give Jesus everything, if you've fallen out of love with Jesus, if you're a young child and you want to give your life to Jesus, look, if you brought someone today as a guest, you didn't bring them to come to this church. You really brought them to come to the Lord. So I want you to look them in the eye right now and say, hey, do you want to give your life to the Lord? Do it right now. Do it right now. It might be family. Family knows family. Family knows who's compromising and who's not. I want you to look them in the eye and say, come on, is this the day? If, listen carefully, if you raise your hand or you wish you did, if I'm talking to anybody, here in this room and you feel drawn to Jesus this morning to give him all and surrender I want you to get out of your seat I don't want you to think about it Jesus said if you acknowledge me before men I will acknowledge you before the Father if you deny me before men I will deny you before the Father get out of your seat come forward right now meet me here at the altar I want us to give the Lord praise come on come on sweets Thank you, Jesus. Come here, come here, Derek. Come on, give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Come, come, come. 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 I want our team to surround everybody who's come forward. This is not a shameful moment for all of you who came forward. This is not, I want you, I want everyone to give the Lord praise. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. This is not a shameful moment for anybody who came forward. This is a moment of love. This is a moment of redemption, of amazing grace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Come on. This is beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to begin praying here in a second, and as I do, nobody here will, they will not distract me. I'd rather you run up here and blow the whole thing up and give your life to the Lord. But for those of you who came forward, this is not a time of shame. You're coming to the one who promised to never turn you away. And he loves you. He loves you dearly. He's already touching him. The Holy Spirit's already falling on him. Now for those of you who come forward, we're going to give our lives away. That's what you're going to do right now. You're going to give your life to Jesus. He's going to take it, nail it to the cross, and give you his own life. And he's going to live his life through you. He's going to free you from every bondage. He's going to wash you clean and hear me well and never remind you of your sin again. Never again. He will never remind you again. There's no sin that you've committed that is too strong for the blood of Jesus. I'll never forget a man who was locked in a hole being tortured for the gospel in Siberia. They left him there for a week, stripped him naked in the snow, tied him to the sides of this hole, left him outdoors. When his torturers came back, oh, this wasn't way back when, by the way. When his torturers came back, they found him there warm and smiling. Warm and smiling there in the snow. And they said, what's going on here? And he said, Jesus came to me. Kept me warm. Kept me company in my suffering. Because there is fellowship in suffering. That's Jesus. And he asked Jesus, where he is naked, Jesus came, exposed and in shame. He said, Jesus, what do you want? What do I have to give you? I have nothing to offer you. He said, give me your sin. 
Give me your sin. The Lamb of God, it's what he does. He takes sin. He became our sin. And he destroys sin and gives you a new life. I want all of us to pray out loud. I want those in their seats to stretch their hands towards these precious children of God. And I want everyone who's come forward just to lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. And I want every, every person in here to, to pray this boldly. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, come I come to you this morning having sinned against you. I, against you. I, am, sorry. I am sorry. Forgive my sin. Forgive my sin. Wash, me Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Cleanse my soul. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died on the cross and gave your life for me. You shed your blood for me. Thank you for dying for me. I don't deserve it. Jesus, I believe that you were buried and raised from the dead as the Son of God. You are God Almighty. Jesus, I believe that you ascended to heaven and you're seated at the right hand of the Father and that you're coming back again. Make me ready for your coming. Okay, this is the precious moment. Say, Jesus, I give you my life. I repent of my sin. Come and live in my heart. I am yours, and you are mine. In Jesus' name. Jose, come around here. I feel the Lord. You, all of you, just gently pray in the Spirit. God's going to begin filling these, these precious people. I don't want her to fall. Hold her up. Joe, just put your hand there. Yeah, you too. Come, wonderful Holy Spirit. Fill her to overflowing. Thank you for newness of life and the fire of God and a new future. Receive the blessed presence of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Spirit. A fresh and filling. A new beginning. A fresh and filling. Come, Holy Spirit. Guys, keep praying. As you're praying, God is filling them up. Receive. What's your name? Abraham. Preach the gospel. Receive fire from heaven. Receive the love of God, Derek. The blessed fire of the Holy Spirit. Newness of life. the Lord oh he's touching them guys Lord let your gentle gentle love fill them newness of life clothe them in your glory I'm telling you there's power flowing here that's amazing hold him up in Jesus name fill him Guys, I wish you could see their faces. I think you can see some of them on camera. There, I'm telling you, there's a genuine move of God here. Miss Debbie, would you come and just stand with Carla here? Just keep your hand on this young lady. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. He's a loving Savior. 
He's a loving Savior. Use him and fill him. Make him a warrior with fire in his mouth. No compromise. Give him the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You lift your hands there in your seats. Come on, this is precious. Father, clothe the people. Clothe us all. Clothe us all in your glory and presence. Let us live in Pentecost. Let us live in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Fill every... Come on, come on. Just... Oh, I remember that old song. Here's my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and fill this, this craving in my soul. Come and quench this thirsting in my souls. Lord Jesus, fill the people from head to toe this morning. Fill them. Fill them. Every person here. Be refreshed in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What a morning. I said, what a morning. People saved and healed and being filled with the Holy Spirit and the precious Word of God. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord. Oh, let's thank Him. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. May the Lord bless you. If you need prayer, in just a moment, I just want to give about another minute here. In just a moment, I'd like our prayer team to come forward. If you need prayer, you'll line up in the center aisle. Our team is here. They're amazingly anointed. They will pray with you. I would highly recommend coming tonight. The Lord is going to move in power and glorify the name of Jesus. God bless you. Have an amazing, amazing day in the presence of Jesus. Now, very quickly, for those of you who came forward, where are you, Dion? Dion, when we're done, I just want you to, I want you to rally them up and then take them over to the new believers table. We're just going to equip you and help you. I'm not going to bother you, I promise. So, Dion, would you do that with them now? Prayer team, come up in about one minute, okay? God bless you. Let's give the Lord praise. his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners Christ died for us Jesus shed his blood he died on the cross he was buried he rose again from the dead on the third day to give you life and to prove that he is the son of God who he said he was Today he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And for those who belong to him, he is interceding for them eternally. And that same Jesus will return again. He will crack the eastern sky like a whip. And with ten thousands upon ten thousands, he will return in glory. In 2017, we received a word from Lou Engle that we really believe is the word of the Lord for our school, our house, and the entire ministry. Lou said that the greatest musicians in the world, 
and the greatest vocalists in the world, the greatest worshipers, that they would descend upon Orlando, Florida to Jesus' image. And that word began to burn in us, and we began to dream about what it would look like to one day have a school where people would come to worship Jesus and be in his presence and receive his word. And a church was birthed in that same worshiping atmosphere. And what a beautiful opportunity that we have as a Jesus people to come before him and to be at his feet and to pour ourselves out before him. Worship has the potential to unlock things that really nothing else in the world can unlock. And so we decided about a year ago to launch a, an opportunity within the Jesus School setting for those worshipers for the musicians, for the singers, for the dancers, for the artists, for the poets. And this is going to be a place where you can come and you can learn and you can grow. And we have highly trained instructors who are gonna be coming. They're gonna be teaching instruments. They're gonna be teaching vocals. Anything that you can think of with worship, it's going to be there. The worship is not about us. We worship for Him. So we wanna invite you to come Come worship the King of Kings with us. So come and be a part of what the Lord is doing. Come and give your heart to the Lord. Come and surrender yourself to the Lord. And let's be ones that are willing to rise and go. And we decided to name it after Bethany, that wonderful house where Jesus was ministered to, that place where the feelings of Jesus were preeminent. It was a place where he desired to not only move, and work and teach and do wonderful things, but a place where he would be adored, a place where he would rest, a place where he would run to so that he would receive ministry. And so now Jesus School has this space that's been created for all of you who are desiring to use your vocal gifts, your instrumental gifts, your gifts of worship, the dancing gifts and give them to Jesus. That Jesus would make this a Bethany, that he'd make our lives a Bethany, where he'd come and rest and recline among us. You were created to experience the presence of God in a way that will transform your life, family, and the world. We understand how difficult it can be to find time to attend a school where you study the Word of God, grow in your faith, and build a community of believers. And that's why we created Jesus School Online. We believe that the Holy Spirit is unlimited in His reach. No matter where you live or what stage of life you're in, we invite you to take part in this amazing online opportunity. You'll be led by world-renowned speakers and worship leaders. You will be taught to seek Jesus daily, be activated in the power of the Holy Spirit, learn to share the gospel, and build community with Jesus people from around the world. At Jesus School Online, we are passionate about seeing a Jesus people raised up to shake the nations for the glory of God. You were created for this moment in history. The Jesus people are emerging and we have one ambition. Jesus himself. Will you join us?